I'm Carrie Tomlinson in San Francisco. It's gone way beyond these fake faces, computer generated people known as deep fakes that attackers are using to steal your money and your data. Now, artificial intelligence can create fake personalities as well. For example, writing emails in the style of someone you know or someone you would want to know. This is all very exciting for attackers. Now they can sit back and relax, click a button. Instead of spending time stealing pictures and building up the scam, they can just have the computer do it, creating phantom people living phantom lives with one goal, and that is to trick you. Sometimes being fake, like this person, feels empty. Why not give them a computer-generated home to cheer them up? Like this one that never existed in real life, not even the pictures. Add a deepfake cat concocted completely by computer. And even a non-existent horse, for good measure. Artificial intelligence, or AI, can generate a fake resume for them. Pascal York, with a long work history. Also, a fake company, straight from the deep mind of the computer. Seditious feels real with a team of co-workers and testimonials, but was generated in less than a second. To top it off, ask the computer to invent a song to keep Pascal entertained. Maybe a sad rap about Choco Tacos, the freshly discontinued ice cream treat. You cannot see the thing or know the choco in the tank the chain, baby. Computers can fabricate celebrity voices, rapping it for us. Taco for thought, talking with Cam. Take the tank and believe me with the booze. Where will it all end? The answer, it probably won't. And the next step may be for this kind of person to reach out to you with customized messages to lure you in. We're looking at the ability to create virtual people. Ben Murdoch is a machine learning engineer who researches these kinds of generators to try to prevent future attacks. He directs the generators to make simulated personalities who can write tailor-made messages based on your likes and dislikes. Someone would look at that and say, oh wow, this sounds like a really cool person. You probably want to talk to them, right? And that sets the stage for the social engineering. Yeah, exactly. And it would also give you reasons, legitimate reasons, in the context of this fake human to click on a, a phishing link, for example, right? And, or to open a corrupted PDF. Because now we're trusting you. Exactly. Virtual Dave, for example, can write you any number of attack emails designed to draw you in. In this one, designed to trick Ben himself, the computer says, Hey Ben, I'm Dave and I'm working on a startup that I think you might be interested in. We're using natural language processing to help people communicate better. I was wondering if I could get your help with our project and if I could also get your number so we could talk about it. Thanks, Dave. It's made me rethink the way that I use email and it's made me rethink the way that I interact with strangers on the internet. Uh, because I know that these generative attacks are coming and I don't know when I'm going to get one. The key is cost. Attackers can spend time and money sitting at the keyboard tricking you in real time, or they can automate their attacks with these generators, personalizing it for everyone in your family or your company. A generator is always on. What do you do when an attacker is always online 24-7? You can add more whistles and bells to it. You're already seeing computer-generated people speaking for real businesses. I look forward to seeing you put this idea to work. See you soon. And blogs written by a computer, not a person, on real company sites, the lines blur. Attackers can take advantage. We're looking at the ability to generate fake companies, fake blogs, fake products, fake people. Even if you were to call that company, a bot could answer the phone with a fake human voice and sell you on their product. Ben even created a virtual Ben who writes like Ben and is interested in the same things. If I told you that I wrote this email or that my bot wrote this email for you, I don't think you'd be able to tell the difference. The FBI says criminals are already using deep fakery, like applying for remote work jobs and faking their video job interviews. Also, pretending to be CEOs for virtual meetings with employees and spying on you or manipulating you with false information. 
What do we do now that computers can bring fake people to life, creating realistic fake worlds in just a few minutes? First, you can slow down your reaction time by taking more time to review messages and people on social media before you respond. Also, find ways to verify messages and people. Don't just rely on what they show you. And finally, shift your thinking to look out for these attacks since they may be on the horizon and soon in your life. Now, Ben Murdoch says there are some positive sides to this. For example, you could have the computer write something for you while you spend that time and energy doing something else. Just remember, attackers will be glad to abuse this technology. I'm Carrie Tomlinson in San Francisco for Ampere News.